Hi guys, today's video will be about non-current assets, the cost of non-current assets and depreciation. So the, today's objectives are to understand how to deduce um, the cost of non-current assets and to explain the process of depreciation. Okay, so the costs. So non-current assets are assets which are expected to have benefits consumed in the future. Um, they, are they are usually measured by historical, historical cost of acquisition for the purpose of the balance sheet. Um, also, plus, the cost of a non-current asset is not just equivalent to the cost of purchase, rather, um, the cost will also be equal to all costs directly necessary to getting the asset and put it, it, putting it into use as, manager, as management intended, and that usually applies to plant, property, and um, equipment. So that's PPE for short. So the costs generally included are for the installation of the machine, uh, transportation of that machine to the place necessary, calibration of that machine so that it is ready for use, preparation of the site so that the uh, machine can be installed, and also the estimation of dismantling the machine necessary at the end of its useful life. So the cost must be, again, directly related and necessary to put the asset into use. So if we look here, uh, for example, um, SCLTD purchased a basketball stand for $20,000. The additional cost incurred was transportation of $500, uh, removal of old stand by uh, 1500 installation fee of 200 and the wage of employees who helped out was $200. Okay, so the cost would be 20000 so that's the initial direct cost, plus transportation, 500 plus removal of old stand to install it. Uh, it's necessary to take the old stand out so you can put the new one in, and then plus the installation fee of 200 Okay, we don't add the wage of employees who helped out because one, it's not directly related to the actual basketball stand, and two, it wasn't actually really necessary because we're going to be paying them 200 anyway. They're on our roster, so it just stays at 22200 uh, Okay, so uh, we go to the initial cost. The decision to capitalize the expenditure um, or treating it as an expense will of course impact the financial statement. So treating it as an expense will cause an immediate reduction in current profit and taxes because if we reduce profit um, by increasing the expense, we also reduce the taxable income that we can be taxed. So therefore we reduce tax and it, also, it would also mean a relatively lower amount of assets compared to capitalizing the expenditure. Because on the other hand, this would cause an increase in assets, but also an increase in depreciation expense in the future. And as a result of an increase in depreciation expense in the future, this would um, slightly reduce profit and as a result, slightly reduce tax for the future um, as throughout the useful life of that machine or um, non-current asset. Okay, so additional costs. So additional costs can also be capitalized if it is materially, it, if only, only if it materially improves productivity, efficiency, or useful life of the asset. It must be a material improvement. So it must be obvious and significant. If it isn't on the other hand, um, it will merely be considered a repair or maintenance expense and will, cannot be capitalized. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to, to depreciation. Depreciation is the process of allocating the cost of the asset throughout the useful life of the asset. As per the matching principle, it is an expense that reflects the consumption of the benefits generated by the asset. So as per the matching principle, we need to record the expense of depreciation or, um, or consumption of uh, benefits as, um, as long as the um, non-current asset is generating revenue. So we do need to um, recognize the expense with the revenue together in the same financial period. So it's not a tool that determines market value, it's just a way of allocation. And the depreciation expense equals the cost minus the salvage value, which gives us the total depreci depreciable amount over the useful life in um, number of periods times number of periods since last depreciation or yet. So if we go to our worked example, so SCLTD purchased a company car for 50000 on the 1st of July 2010. It has a salvage value of $1,000 and its expected useful life is seven years. What is the depreciation expense per year? What is the accumulated depreciation on the 30th of June 2013? And also the carrying amount at that time 
of, that is 30 of June 2013. Okay, so um, first year of past, so that's one full year. What is our depreciation expense? It's cost minus salvage value over the number of years um, that is useful and the number of the periods since the last depreciation. Okay, so it's going to be our first year of depreciation. So it would be debt expense would equal to 50,000 minus 1,000 over seven years of useful life times one year, which equals to $7,000 um, depreciation expense. So then um, on the 30th of June 2013, um, three years has passed. So what is the accumulated depreciation then? So that would just be um, 7,000 depreciation expense for three years. So times three, that would equal 21,000, okay? So then we move on to the carrying amount. So what is the carrying amount at 30th of June 2013? So the carrying amount is just cost minus accumulated depreciation. Cost is 50,000. Minus depreciation accumulated is 21,000. That gives us a total carrying amount of 29,000. Okay, so what happens when we dispose of that asset and we sell it off to someone else? So on the 30th, 31st of December 2013, LBJ LTD, they paid $30,000 cash for that vehicle. Okay, so what do we do? So first we need to record depreciation up until the date of sale. So we need to make sure that accumulated depreciation is up to date. Um, so now we know that half a year has passed since the 30th of June 2013. So that's half a year of depreciation, that's 3500 Okay, so second we need to write off the accumulated depreciation from the asset. So what is the accumulated depreciation? That will just be the accumulated depreciation from before. So 21000 from the 30th of June plus the 3500 um, first till the 31st of December. That gives us a total um, accumulated depreciation of 24500 So that's 24500 from our car. So that we can reduce the value of the car to the book value amount, which would equal um, 50000 minus 24500 That will give us an amount of $25,500. That's going to be our book value of the car. So now, knowing this book value, that's when we start to recognize any gain or loss on sale. So we know, um, so we debit cash by 30000 because that's how much she's going to pay us for it. And then we go to uh, credit our car. That's how much, um, that's the book value of it. So the gain here is $4,500 because um, we've sold the vehicle for greater than the economic value that we thought it had. And therefore, um, we have a gain of 4500 on the other hand, of course, if um, the vehicle itself sold for, say, $20,000, um, remember, keeping this book value, we'd have a DR, so cash, 20000 Then we have a credit somewhere here um, of from the car of 2005. Okay, 25500 That always remains the same. So any debit or credit will go here. So uh, we do need to remember that debits must equal credits. So we need to debit this. If we debit that, we have a loss, of course, of 5,500 because they've only paid us 20,000. Its value to us is 20, uh, 25,500 and therefore we did make a loss of 5,500. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson today, guys. I hope you learned something. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.